On the day of Pentecost, Peter preached boldly to the Jewish pilgrims who had come into Jerusalem from all the surrounding nations. Pentecost is one of the three pilgrimage festivals that God required every male Jew to attend annually. So Jerusalem at this time was filled with Israelite men who had come in from all the other nations for this feast. We really see the wisdom of God in pouring out His Spirit on the day of Pentecost at this time. Remember that the Gospel of Jesus Christ is to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Peter preached boldly to his fellow countrymen on this day. Peter explained that this same Jesus, whom they had unjustly crucified, had now been raised to life, just as David had prophesied generations earlier. When they heard this, they were cut to the hearts, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what should we do? Peter answered, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We read that about 3,000 gladly received the gospel message that day and were saved and baptized. We see then how the early church was birthed in power. Peter's bold preaching in the power of the Holy Spirit yielded exponential spiritual fruit. The gospel, when it's truthfully proclaimed in the anointing of God's Spirit, always yields spiritual fruit in those who receive it rightly. Through public baptism, these 3,000 new believers were now making a bold public identification, both with Christ and His newly formed community, the Church. Just like these early Christians, you and I must also be willing to make a clear public identification with Christ and His consecrated community, the Church. Faith in Jesus Christ, then, means much more than just a mere privatized personal preference. It involves a radical shift in our worldview, where Jesus Christ and His kingdom are now our central core value. As believers, Christ is now our sole purpose and meaning for living. 